In this lesson, we're going to explore the benefits and usage of subscriptions. I've talked about subscriptions a number of times now, so let's actually look at exactly what they are. I can really think of a subscription as that base unit of an agreement between a customer and Microsoft. Now I can have multiple subscriptions, but let's say this is subscription one. And the idea is for that particular subscription, there's a certain agreement and it's gonna follow a certain billing model. It could be pay as you go, it might be part of an enterprise agreement, there's many different options. But it's gonna be part of some agreement on how I'm going to actually pay for the services. It's a billing boundary. It's also a boundary by default of trust of my security. Now, the accounts we leverage for Azure, well, they have to live somewhere. And what actually happens is we have Azure Active Directory. So my company has a particular Azure AD tenant. Now in this tenant, there are users, there are groups, there are devices. Often we'll synchronize the content from our on-premises Active Directory, but that's not absolutely required. Every subscription trusts one and only one Azure AD tenant. So it's a particular tenant. This is where when I create those roles, I give a certain user or group permissions, it's the users and groups in that particular Azure AD tenant. So the Azure AD tenant does not live in a subscription. It's completely separate. And I tell a subscription, hey, you're gonna trust this particular directory. If I was to go and look at my subscriptions here, I'll pick my development subscription, we can see straight away we have this idea of directory. So that is the Azure AD tenant that it is trusting for all of the various users and groups that will be able to grant permissions to resources contained in this. You do see there is an option to change directory. So if I created my subscription, but now I want to use a different Azure AD tenant and give those users and groups permissions, I can, if I have the right permissions, move it to a different directory. Now, just like a resource group, at a subscription level, I can grant roles. I can grant a role assignment. All of these different roles are available, and any role assignment I give would be inherited by anything within the subscription. Inherited by the resource groups, inherited by the resources. I can also, apply budgets. So if we look here, I can see, hey, there's budgets that I can apply. And I can also apply policy, if I can remember exactly where it is on this picture. But policy would be there as well. There we go, policies. I knew I'd get there eventually. So all of those same things I could do at the resource group, I can actually do at the subscription as well. So I can think about, okay, for this subscription, once again, I can apply budget. I can apply role-based access control. And I can apply policy. And remember, within that particular subscription, we have one or more resource groups that could have their own budgets, RBAC and policy, but these would get inherited. So everything I'm applying here gets inherited into the resource group, into the actual resources that we actually create, whatever they may be. So I have that idea that, hey, I can create the subscription, I could set those things at the subscription level, and then I can have one or more resource groups within there with their various resources. Now a subscription has certain limits. So I set a certain billing, but there are also limits. Some of these are soft limits that I can put in a request to raise it. Some of them are hard limits. There's a document that walks through all of these. 
So if we jump over, I can see the Azure subscription and limits. And I'm not going to go through these because you'll quickly see there are really a lot of them. But I can see certain things at the subscription level. Hey, I can have 980 resource groups per subscription. I can have 50 tags, so I can put tags on a subscription. How many unique tag calculations per subscription? Deployments per location per subscription. And there's all these different things. And there's resource group limits, template limits. Then each individual type of resource has various limits as well. So there's a massive number of different limits I might come to. And that can actually play into the architecture of, well, how many subscriptions do I actually need? If I'm a small company with just a couple of applications, I might just have one subscription. I could use resource groups to do separate role-based access control and different policies. But very commonly, I'll probably at minimum, maybe I want to separate out subscriptions. Maybe it's the idea that well, maybe this is my prod subscription. And then maybe I have a test subscription. That idea of different permissions would definitely apply. I might give people more permissions in dev test than I would in production. Policy, I might have far more stringent requirements for production. Likewise, I may restrict development to only be now to use maybe cheaper types of resource. I might have a much bigger budget on production I do development. So I might have different subscriptions for different environments. So I may have them for that reason. So I want to split it by environments. It may be for billing purposes. So that idea of the billing, well, that might be a purpose. I want to separate out for billing purposes so I can easily see um, what am I spending in these different purposes. I'll separate them into different subscriptions. Now, I can use tagging for billing as well. That's actually a very powerful thing. When I get my billing, I can use the tag to work out, well, what was this actually used for? Those limits may actually come into play. I need different subscriptions because I'm doing such a big amount of resource. I'm actually, I'm running out. I've hit a certain limit, so I need to go and create a new subscription. If I'm using a different Azure AD tenant, certainly that would, because a subscription can only trust one Azure AD tenant, I might need to go in different subscription for that purposes. And remember that resource groups live within that subscription. Some things I can actually move between subscriptions. There are actual specific tools for resource move, but there are limitations to that. So I we want to try and get things at least in the right subscription when we do deployments. But think of that subscription as a billing boundary. It has certain limits. And by default, it is kind of this security isolation as well, unless I do other things to broaden that out.